what I wanna do Then I'ma get a business too You can bet that never gotta sweat that Now I thought you was gonna be buying me purses and shit right now. <laughs> I thought you was gonna be buying me purses. All this extra child oh, support said. money that you saved. <laughs> she be good at acting. <laughs> What's your social? What's I'm about why you ain't got it? <laughs> right, you should have it by now. Right. They don't never like to handle business. Not at all. No, I'm supposed to be eat. scheduling him a dentist appointment See, today. That's exactly how it goes. Mm -hmm. You gotta have their business because they don't like doing it. Mm -mm. Or they won't. He literally do it. just told me last night. He says, See, that's the difference between men and women. We don't want to do that. Scheduling appointment. And paying. But so we don't schedule appointments. <laughs> I need you to do it. No. I was like, No, nah, I understand. I hate it when I finally had to schedule my own appointments because at no. first your mom would do everything. No. I understand. That's what I understand. Yeah, well, but <laughs> so I'm like, clearly, all right, so I I'll see he not going to do it himself, so I got to go ahead and do schedule it. it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Once she signed them papers, you the daddy. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't sing it. <laughs> how he respond to his pranks when oh, she be doing these pranks he be kicking out on her he's so confused I'm so sorry. <laughs> Starting with I'm so sorry. <laughs> Preparing him for anger.
show. Kobe. You see that TV? Nah, I don't want to <laughs> it's the my fourth quarter. <laughs> oh, he's still wearing my fourth Hell oh, yeah. He probably looks very good. Oh, he made his man. <laughs> yeah, because he don't even care if it's a joke or not at this point. He missing his game. Yeah. Be like, don't worry, babe. I'll make sure I tell you who won. <laughs> you ain't even see it, though. That makes sense. Look. 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 What do you mean? Don't do that. We're going to the park right now. I did not watch any of them type of shows. Oh. <laughs> ah. Oh, don't come back. <laughs> You're bad luck. Downstairs. Just hand in the lamp. Hold on, I got to tell Oh, now she went in my room. Hey, nail babes. So I decided to pop in real quick because I almost just let this whole video play without telling you guys the story. For those who watched my last video, you know that I said I was going to tell you guys. Um, well, actually, it was probably a few videos ago. Anyways, I'm supposed to tell you guys the story of Mr. Creepy Shadow Man. I did like some Reddit readings 
couple videos ago and um it basically it was scary stories i like scary stories on reddit and by the end of the video i was letting you guys know that i had a creepy experience in real life so i'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys this story while you watch the application process for these nails so don't forget to smash that like button comment share subscribe all of the above okay so you don't miss any of my future uploads and without further ado we gonna get right into it so this story takes place maybe about i want to say one two three four five six or seven years ago i was living with my sister and my ex-boyfriend at the time we all moved in together um in this house not too far away from where i currently live for reference i grew up in a house around the corner from where i live at right now and my sister and i lived behind the house that i grew up in so I'm very familiar with the area. I'm familiar with the neighborhood. And that's just what made this situation all the more weird. In all my years of life, I've never had an experience like this ever. And I grew up in a neighborhood that was like mad quiet. Like it was real quiet. Um, neighbors are friendly, mostly old people. Um, the only young people in the area were like the kids that I grew up with. We went to school and some of them left and moved out or moved elsewhere. And only a couple of us stayed around the neighborhood. By the time I moved in with my sister, like most of my friends are gone. Like the, like all of the people that I used to chill with no longer live around here. So you know, the neighborhood was just dead, like, for real. Wasn't really much going on. Yeah. That's just a little backstory. So, we moved in, and life was good. Like, we was pretty much just chilling. Um, She has her kids, and I just had my boyfriend, for real. And we just used to chill out. We worked every day and came home and then we would just party like we would just buy pizza and we would buy drinks and occasionally me and my sister used to just go out she likes the the club life nightlife type type vibe and I'm more of a quiet person to myself person never really go out much so she started getting me out the house a little bit more I believe my sister is like five or seven years older than me. I'm sorry for not. Like, I don't really know the ex like the exact age gap, because we're like um. We were like long lost sisters at one point, but, anyways, let's continue. This day in particular, when the events first started to occur. I don't remember what I was doing this day. The only thing that I remember is what happened at night. I was, I had fallen asleep with my boyfriend. Um, um, we, we were in the basement. Like we had the basement area and my sister had the upstairs area. So in between the top floor and the basement was the middle ground where it was just like the living room, kitchen, whatever, right? So me, I just, all I remember is waking up to my boyfriend yelling, like yelling. Mind you, my boyfriend at the time was a grown man. Like he was 35 or 36 at the time. And I was like, 19 20 right and he's a big guy like a big dude he was like at least I want to say like 300 pounds something like that and so to hear him yell the way he yelled I obviously like jumped out of my sleep and all I hear is hey yo what the 
like that's how that's how he like but he yelled it really loud so I like I sit straight up like in the bed like I literally just popped straight up and it was so dark mind you we're in a basement so with the lights off and everything you know you can't really see much of anything but I'm I'm sitting up now and he's my boyfriend is to the left of me and he's also sitting up now in the bed and he's just staring straight ahead like just staring straight ahead so I look at him and I look in the direction of what he's staring at and I see a very tall slender shadow of a man that's the only thing that that's the best way I can describe what I was seeing. There was no face in particular, like all it was, was like a dark spot, like (laughs) as if you're seeing a shadow on a wall, but you could tell that the person was not in the wall. Like the person was standing in the middle of the floor at the back of the basement. So we're just staring at this figure we're not moving an inch. We're not budging. We're still like, mind you, I'm just waking up out of my sleep. So I'm still foggy. Like I'm just trying to figure out what it is that I'm looking at. Out of nowhere, the shadow of a man literally sprinted up the stairs. You could hear the footsteps of him sprinting all you hear is doom 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 bam and the bam was the sound of the basement door slamming shut so there were a set of stairs that led up to the middle ground where the kitchen was so all we heard was footsteps run like we saw just take off run straight up the stairs and we heard a door slam I'm still completely in shock. Like, I don't know what it was that I just witnessed. Uh, My first thought was maybe this was a break in. So I did the next best thing. I ran upstairs to check on my sister and the kids. Where was my boyfriend? My boyfriend was sitting there shook. Like, literally shook. He was scared. He was scared. He did not get up. (laughs) He was sitting there in his boxers and did not move an inch. I'm thinking that he's going to get up and go into protective mode and jump up and go check to see who that was. But no, it was me, little old me. Mind you, I'm every bit of 4'11", 5 foot. Okay? (laughs) And we had a door there was a basement door um, behind our bed. And those th- that door actually led directly to a set of stairs. So if a person ran out the back door, I wasn't thinking this at the time. But if the, if, if the person ran out the kitchen door, because that would have been the closest door to um, lead to outside... If he ran out there, we could have easily gotten him. Like, if we opened up the basement door, we could have literally caught him going down the back back um, stairs. Um, so I did think about that. Um, I'm not. I I can't remember, but I can't remember if I actually opened the back door or not to check. I just know that that was something we could have done. Anyways, I know that I ran upstairs after once I just waited to see if I heard anything else after that boom, 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 bam. I went straight upstairs out the basement, um, you know, out the upstairs basement door into the kitchen and I went straight up this next set of stairs leading to my sister's room. When I get to my sister's room, I just try, like, I'm waking her up, like, in a 
in a panic. Like, I'm just like, sis, like, somebody was just in the house. This day, um, my sister's boyfriend um, at the time was chilling with her. So they had fallen to, um, to sleep together or fallen asleep together. So I'm waking, I'm trying to wake them both up and they knocked out by the way. So I'm trying to wake them both up and and trying to explain to them in their, you know, just woke up brain that somebody was just in the house and I'm not sure what just happened. And I tried to describe to them in detail what we just witnessed and they're not understanding, like they're not, (laughs) they're not understanding, uh, what what's going on my sister gets up we start checking the house at this point my my boyfriend at the time was trying to um explain to them the same thing that he says okay so from my boyfriend's side of the story he's saying that he woke up to someone standing over top of us and staring like straight at him like just like he's saying he didn't see a face either but imagine laying down on your back and opening your eyes and there's something like you can feel it staring at you but you can't see anything like no face it's just a black figure so that's what he's saying he saw um right before he yelled and that's when the figure sprinted to the back of the basement which is when I woke up and saw the figure standing you know close to the wall by the stairs so I'm guessing that that's I guess that's what happened before I woke up um but it's not making sense to my sister it's not making sense to any of us really because we walking all through the house and we don't notice that anything's missing. Now, mind you, at the time, we had a lot of things that they anybody trying to break in could have taken or could have wanted to take, but nothing was myth- missing. My sister said that her purse was moved because she had her purse hanging on a door handle. And when we came downstairs to check to see if anything was gone, she said her purse had been moved to the counter, but there was nothing in it. So she wasn't worried about it. Um, and we went we went to check the door. Like that's what that's what I was like, well, I heard a door close. So whoever it was, they had to leave out the door. I heard it slam shut. So we are looking at the kitchen door before touching anything. Like we just look at the kitchen door and the door was locked. <laughs> This is the this is where it starts to get scary. Every door in the house was locked from the inside. Did you hear me? Every door from the inside of the house was locked. So that means that no one should have been able to get in. Uh-huh. Yeah. No one should have been able to get in. And if they had gotten out the house, how did they lock the door behind them? You get what I'm saying? Like, it was that creepy. At this moment, it was really, really late. Like, um, probably like something in the morning. Still dark outside. Like, it was that time of night. So, we didn't even, we didn't even think, like, we decided we were going to call the police in the morning. I know. I know. Bright idea, right? For a break-in. Bright idea. Wait till the morning not a good idea at all but we waited till the next day and (laughs) I think we had just we were going to just drop the situation because no one was harmed and nothing was missing so we weren't even gonna make a report until until my sister's boyfriend shoes were missing they were gone He left that day with no shoes on his feet. (laughs) So now in our minds, okay, this was a person who broke in and I guess petty theft. Like, I don't know. They took a pair of sneakers. 
All we know is that he couldn't find his shoes the next day. So he left with socks on. And we just, we called the police. We did have them come. They checked the house. Um, they said that they didn't find anything. No fingerprints. No, no, um, no um, signs of forced entry. Nothing. So after the police didn't find anything, we just carried on about our day-to-day lives as usual. We went back to work and partying and chilling every night and da-da-da-da-da. Now, at the time, me and my boyfriend, like a little bit after this incident, we started having like falling outs. Like we weren't really... We weren't too, too fond of each other for a while. And it led to us deciding to separate. And he moved back in with his mom. So, of course, after that, um, my sister is not going to let me, like, just be in there by myself. Like, she started taking me back out again. Like, start chilling and going out and all the fun stuff like we just got out of the house when we could so i want to say at least a month or like yes it had to be at least a month that went by with nothing no strange occurrences like everything was fine everything was chill um we went to we went out we went out one night with her friend she had a girlfriend at the time, um, and she was cool. Like, we just all went to the club. Like, we went to the club to have some drinks, and I'm lying. I got completely toe up. <laughs> I got completely toe up this night. I don't know whether it was a birthday or what. But I was toe up from the flow up because when I I know that my sister dropped me off home so I could sleep and I know that I woke when I woke up I I was missing a shoe <laughs> well I wasn't missing a shoe but my sh- I had one shoe on one shoe off um I had you know how you buy food at the club or stuff like that like yeah the the whole plate of food like the bag of food was not in the refrigerator actually it was on the bed next to me like I was that kind of drunk right but so I'm passed out right knocked out cold all I hear is boom 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 police are you okay mind you again I'm in the dark I'm in the basement. Actually, no, I wasn't in the dark. No, I, what, wait. Wait, was I in the dark? I don't actually remember. But anyways, I know I saw police flashlights. So that's letting, that's making me think that I was in the dark because I saw police flashlights. So, or I could have had my basement light on. And still, no, I think I was in the dark. Because <laughs> I heard boom, 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 police open up. And... The police officers, um, I, they're like, are you okay? And I'm just trying to figure out what is going on, obviously. So I'm waking up. I'm like, I was okay. Like, <laughs> like I was okay. Like, is everything good? So at this point, I'm trying to gather myself together because I'm just laid all open. Like, I'm just wide open, legs open. I'm just knocked out, still in my dress or whatever I wore to the club. So I, I, I'm stumbling up, getting up to go upstairs to see what the police are talking about. Like, what are they talking about? So I get upstairs and I'm asking them, okay, I'm fine. What's going on? Is everything okay? They tell me, Your sister saw someone in the house and she was so scared. She called us to come check on you. She's still in her room. She dropped the keys from the window and told us to come in and check on you. (laughs) 
Girl, I died. I I died laughing. I was like, (laughs) are you serious? (laughs) But I'm like, okay, I'm fine. All right, I'm fine. So I get up. I go to my sister's room, and she's, like, freaking out. Like, she's like, sis, I saw it. I saw, I'm like, chill out. She like, I saw what you saw. I said, you talking about the the, the creepy shadow thing? He like, yes, yes, the, the creepy shadow man. I saw him. Mind you, this is how he got his name, Mr. Creepy Shadow Man. She's like, I saw him. And I'm asking her, okay, what happened? What happened? What happened? So once the police have, you know, assessed the situation, they realize nothing's no one's in imminent danger or anything. They go ahead and leave. And she's now explaining to me what she saw. Here's my sister's story. My sister tells me, you know, sis, um, you know how we went out last night? And we went to the club and stuff and we brought you home so you could go to sleep or, you know, you was you was drunk. So we brought you home so you could go to sleep. I'm like, yes, yeah, sis, what's up? She like, well, I went back out. I came, I dropped you off and I went back out with the friend. I'm like, all right, cool. So like, you know, like how we get here. She's like, um, so I, I dropped. I came back home a second time after I went back out at the club. So I'm just getting home again. And mind you, it's like late, like probably like three, four o'clock in the morning at this time. And this is right after the police leave. So she's telling me what happened. She dropped me off. She went back out to the club. She came back home. When she came back home, she says... That she went to her bedroom and she hit the lights because it's late. Like she was going to take it in for the night and go to sleep too. She already took her friend home and everything. So it was just her. At this time, um, we when we went out, we had her grandfather watch the kids. That's who usually watched the kids when we went outside. So granddad was in the other room with the boys. And she said, you know, everything was everything. She checked on them um, when she uh, first uh, got home or, you know, they were all asleep. So it was just her upstairs and she hit her lights because time to go to bed. And she gets in her bed and she closed her door to her bedroom door. She didn't close it all the way. She only closed it too, like a little crack in the door. She lays in bed and she gets on her phone. She says, I don't know what's going on, sis, but whatever it was must have thought I was asleep because it came to my bedroom door. And... She said the bathroom light. Well, she said, she said, um, no, not the bathroom light. She said her phone light. She was on her phone and the light from her phone. When she saw, she like saw something peeking in her bedroom door. She put her phone light up and all she saw was a shadow of a man. And she thought. That it was her granddad for a second. Like, imagine sitting in the dark. So you're staring hard as hell at this figure, trying to figure out what it is through a crack in the door. Like, so she's sitting there staring at it, kind of scared. But she's thinking that it's her granddad. So she says, granddad? To see what happens. In her mind, at this point, she knows that it's not her grandfather because she said that the shadow, the head of the person staring in the door was too tall to be granddad. So when she says granddad, the man backs away from the door and walks down the stairs 
and out the door. This is what she's saying that she's witnessing. But again, she didn't get up to go follow this this man immediately. Like she didn't get up to go follow him because she was scared. So she's just sitting there in her bed and she's watching the figure walk away. So she's hearing him go down the stairs and close the door. Now, mind you, remember when I first saw the figure, the figure ran up the stairs and slammed the door. This time, he just walked away and closed the door. Sis was so shook, she called the police and had them check on me. (laughs) And I don't blame her because at the time that we witnessed that situation, um, we, I had my boyfriend with me. We were together. He ain't do nothing. He didn't do nothing to help, but he, he, I still had someone there beside me. She didn't have no one beside her when she witnessed this. So I could only imagine the fear, the internal fear, right? So now my sister is paranoid. She starts to become paranoid because there's been there was some like a time after that like where like she she didn't really express how scared she was but I knew she was scared because like one day I tried to wake her up on some calm stuff like just like hey sis what's up and she starts swinging on me like swinging kicking like she was scared and so I understand how that traumatized her because like having somebody just walking through your house and you don't know what's going on anyways we started to speculate on what we thought it might be because my sister, like my sister, she had actually lost someone really close to her. She lost her boyfriend um, not too long before these instances started occurring. So she, like something in her, like felt like it might have been him, like his spirit or something. Because I mean, the first time she had a boy, a boy, a boyfriend in the house and whatever it was took his shoes like so we started to speculate like maybe that's the ghost of your ex-boyfriend like that's what we was thinking because we didn't really have no words to describe it because there's never any evidence of forced entry into the house the house be locked so how is this person just coming and going freely and we never see a face it's just a shadow of a man and it can walk like it's walking through the house so we just we just carried on again as usual but now we're a little bit more on guard like we we don't really know if this is going to happen again we don't know if we're going to to like what what can what's going to happen next like like we feel like we're being watched and spied on in our own house but then again nobody was ever harmed everyone was fine and nothing major you know nothing was missing or anything one day we found an attic I won't say we my sister was going through her closet because she started searching the house to try to figure out where this person could be coming in and out from so we get down to um, her closet so she's like she calls me in the room one day like sis and I'm like what's up sis like what's going on so she like grabs me and like pulls me towards the closet door and like she has a closet where you walk in like you walk into the closet like it's like a tight space it's not really a big it's not a big closet it's a small closet but you can look either way you can look left and right in the closet but it's small and there was like a like a level like a stair and she would put all her shoes on and everything and she had like some clothes that were hanging from the top but when you move that stuff she noticed that there was a little a door if you will like there was a like if you ever seen an attic cuz when i grew up i had an attic that was in my bedroom but in this closet, there was like an attic. Well, the when I in my bedroom, it was really large. Like you could clearly see that there's a door on the on the wall, the top of the wall. 
the ceiling but in the closet you can't just see the the door like it was hidden um until you move stuff around and then you'll notice that there's like a little square of a door like it's not a large door but so one day we kind of get the nerve the courage to go in the closet and try to see what's up there so at this point again she never knew that the door was there like we never had no reason to even go looking for a door but she found the door nonetheless and so one day um we decided to go up in the attic and so when we went in the attic or whatever that little door was basically it was just it was just like It like it led to the inside of everyone's roof. Like if that makes sense. It was like okay, where we lived at was like in a it was it was a house but it was like a a townhouse kind of thing. Like the houses are connected like one building. So when we went inside the attic, there was like, you could see, you could just see roof. Like there was nothing in, in the attic space. We couldn't see any, anybody, nobody was living up there. Like there was nothing there, but we started to speculate that maybe this person was hiding in the closet, like in the, in the attic and like maybe coming down when we weren't around and stuff and walk in the house or whatever but it's funny how we lived in there like we lived there and we was there majority of the time and we never noticed like we never witnessed anybody like just walking around until then and we had already been in this house for like a smooth couple months like four four months five months like yeah I don't know but so she eventually let the landlord know about the attic space and and she requested to have it locked the the um yeah she had she had the landlord go up and look in the attic too he didn't see anything out of the ordinary so he went ahead and he locked up the the attic so that no one could come in and out of it and that's pretty much the last we ever heard of Mr. Creepy Shadow Man, because soon after that, we all moved out. So <laughs> so we don't know whether or not it continued to happen in the house because uh, we didn't stay for long. I ended up moving out of the house um, soon, like soon after that, um, just because of personal reasons. Like we, you know, we were both like, we're both grown. Like we started, you know, trying, doing our own thing. But um, we're able to laugh about it now because I'm like, remember when, you know, you <laughs> you didn't believe me like cause she thought I was tripping. She thought we was out of our mind until so she actually witnessed it herself. <laughs> but yeah, that was the story of Mr. Creepy Shadow Man. Um, leave a comment like, I don't know, feel free to comment. Um what you think about this story and what you would have done in this situation, anything that stood out to you or what you think it possibly could have been because we were all at a, like a loss for like words. Like we didn't really know if it was a person or a, or spirit or a ghost or whatever you want to call it. Like we never got to the bottom of it. Like we don't know what it was. I'm going to see if I can find a picture of what he most closely resembled And I'm going to make that the cover photo so you guys can get an idea of what it was that we actually saw. And that's all for today's video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.